I have been, for the last several months, on a quest. A quest to rank every major operating system release known to mankind. Each on a 50-point scale to determine once and for all what the best operating system of all time is. And today we're going to be looking at a system that is, in my opinion, rather special. That operating system, DeskView X by Quarterdeck. <laughs> now, uh, for those of you asking, what is DeskView X? I, 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 would, I don't blame you. Not many people in 2020 have ever even heard of this system from the mid-1990s. Its predecessor, plain old DeskView, without the slash X, was first released in 1985, which was a multitasking, windowed system for DOS. It allowed someone with very modest PC hardware to run multiple text mode DOS applications at the same time with overlapping, resizable windows and whatnot. And this multitasking, it wasn't the cooperative multitasking that we saw in early Windows up through version 3.1.1, and of course a Mac OS up through version 9. No. No sorry, Bob. DeskView had true preemptive multitasking. It was fast, it was stable, it was lightweight, it was downright impressive. But it was all text mode. Then DeskView X came along in the 1990s, bringing a complete X11, an X Windows server, a full X orgy graphical interface with it. Prior to Xorg being a thing, back when it was still just X11. But if you're seeing the video or reading the article, which you can grab over at lunduke.com, you see it's a very Unixy X Windows look and feel. Uh, and this is all literally running on top of DOS. And a lot of you might be saying, oh, it sits on top of DOS, so it's not really its own operating system. When you add multitasking, a massive UI framework, and all the features we're about to go through, I think you get to call yourself your very own operating system at that point. So to give you some idea of what this system is capable of, here's just a quick rundown of some, just some, of the features of DeskView X. It's amazing. Full preemptive multitasking, and I mean it works well. So many people use this to run like DOS multi-line BBSs and servers back in the 80s and 90s. It was absolutely amazing. A complete X window system with overlapping, resizable, movable windows, which wasn't, you know, a, a foregone conclusion back in like the 80s and into the early 90s. The ability, this is not a joke, to act as an X11 client to run X Windows applications running on another computer, such as a Unix or Linux box. So you could have a Unix or Linux box running X11 applications, and you're working with them locally from your DeskView X DOS system. Very cool. Also cool, the ability to act as an X11 server, allowing another X Windows client, like a Linux box, to run applications off of the DeskView X computer. Yeah the ability to run DOS applications, right, in little movable windows or, or otherwise, and the ability to run a complete instance of Windows 3.1 or 3.1.1, Windows for Workgroups, as a movable, resizable X11 window. More on that in a moment. And an SDK for building and porting from other systems X11 applications. And this included uh, networking applications like early web browsers. They really did have uh, various applications like in Mosaic and, and early Netscapes and whatnot available for this system. Now, uh, again, many might make the case that DeskView X is not actually an operating system. It does sit on top of DOS, much just like uh, early versions of Windows, but I would posit that that doesn't do DeskView X justice. A preemptive multitasking system capable of running DOS, Windows, local X11, and remote X11 applications. I mean, holy cow, people, that is more power than many operating systems even of today. So yes, DeskView X is an operating system. Just one that also needs DOS, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it needs DOS, but it is its own real thing. Now, before we dive into the scores, 
let's do a quick recap of how the scoring works. There are five categories, each is worth 10 points. Enjoyability, how much fun is it to use? Polish, how polished is the experience? Immortality, how well does the system run now and how well will it run in the future? I feel like that's an important one. Importance, how important both technologically and culturally and historically is that operating system? And wildcard, it's a 10 point wildcard category that can be awarded for any other reasons. Um, uh, the idea here being that every operating system is unique, it, it accomplishes its own unique things, and we should be able to give them special scores based on those cool accomplishments. All right, so here we go. Enjoyability. I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. And I'll put this really simply. DeskView X is easy and fun to use. So uh, how you use it is incredibly simple. You tap the Alt key on your keyboard and it pops up a global system menu. From there you can launch applications, you manage the window layout, close applications and the like. And just about everything, and I mean everything including resizing and moving windows, can be done entirely from a keyboard without ever touching a mouse. The mouse works too, but you don't need to take your hands off the keyboard if you don't want to. I love that. It, and it makes it very easy uh, to figure out how to do all those sorts of things with just the keyboard. Add on top of that the ability to run DOS, Windows 3.1, and X Windows applications. <sighs> this is just so much gosh darn fun. <laughs> oh, oh, fun little thing. So, so remember, DeskView X works as an X11 server, right? And it can run an entire instance of Windows 3.1 as an X11 window, right? Think about that for a minute. If you have a DOS plus Windows 3.1 plus DeskView X computer somewhere, whether it's a virtual machine or a physical piece of hardware, you can run Windows 3.1 applications on your Unixy Linuxy box somewhere else acting as an X11 client. That is cool, right? I mean, I tell you, the system is just fun to use. It, oh, absolutely deserves a high score here. So yeah, eight out of 10. Polish, I'm giving it a seven out of 10. And here's something crazy. Desk View X is the easiest X11 based system I have ever installed. It is seamless, fast, almost impossible to mess up in the installation process. It also ranks as the easiest X, X Windows based system to learn that I have ever used. Launching applications and managing Windows without the slightest bit of documentation. I mean, you don't need any documentation to learn how to use this system. A, a, a user can figure out how to use most aspects of the entire operating system, including the keyboard shortcuts, with no more than about four or five minutes. That's not even a joke. It is so well polished. And, and while there are places where I would love to see some more customization options, there's already quite a lot here, including multiple window managers like TWM, OpenLook, and Motif. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, immortality. Even this is a score of 8 out of 10. See, DeskView X runs well in 2020. It just does. I'm running it right now to really kick the tires here on two older computers, one 486 and one Pentium, as well as within a virtual machine. All have been running excellently. My only complaint here would be a simple one that other systems receive now as well. Because DeskView X was developed by a company that no longer exists, Quarter Deck is gone and the software is not open source, the development of support for newer hardware has ended. While this doesn't present much of an issue when using virtual machines or older hardware, it would be quite nice to be able to run this using newer graphics cards, be able to use larger amounts of RAM and the like. I would have given a slightly lower score here for the immortality category, but the fact that this can be used as a thin client to run remote X11 applications from darn near any DOS computer, that increases the usability of this system in modern times significantly. So I give it an eight out of 10. Now importance, I'm giving it a two out of 10. <laughs> Because as cool, fun, and powerful as DeskView X is, it doesn't exactly have a lasting impact. I know of nobody 
nobody that actively uses this system now in 2020. I mean, I'm sure someone exists, but I doubt many. And with the popularity of the competition, namely, namely Microsoft Windows, DeskView X also doesn't hold a place of high nostalgia value. So historically, technologically, and just from a cultural aspect, DeskView X is all but forgotten. And that's kind of a bummer. Uh, I've actually started using the system increasingly after I, I wrote the little scores for this and everything. And I, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but realistically, the importance, it's got to get a low score. Uh, now, the wild card. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10 in the wild card category. Here's my thinking of this. X11, both client and server. DOS, Windows 3.1, preemptive, multiple old school window managers. This system really hits a lot of the things that I absolutely love. If this OS were open source or, or had an active community building new hardware and software for it, this score would have been even higher. Oh, oh, yes, it has X eyes. Uh, just for anyone wondering, yes, you can load this up and run a DOS version in an X11 window manager of X eyes. Come on. How is that not worth a couple of points? So that gives us a total score after everything's added together, of 34 out of 50. Now, 34 points. DeskView X 2.1 is now in a three-way tie for second place, which honestly, I did not anticipate that when I sat down to start evaluating and scoring the system. I mean, sure, I expected it to at least not be at the bottom of the rankings, but... But, I mean, heck, I mean, based solely on some of the unique features it has, you'd think, well, this should be getting a somewhat decent score. It's not going to get like 10 points out of 50. But really, this little OS has impressed me in a big way. If just a few things had been different, if it had the source code available or an active developer community, Deskview X could have taken the crown. It's just, uh, just absolutely amazing. Uh, all right, here's the updated rankings. Right now, sitting in first place is MS-DOS 6.22. Yeah, go watch the video and look through all the details to see why I gave it that score with 36 points. But right behind it, at 34 points in a three-way tie, Windows 3.1.1, Microsoft Basic 80 for the TRS-80 Model 100, and DeskView X 2.1. Macintosh System Software 6.08 is down there a little ways, all the way at the bottom of the list, Microsoft Windows 1.0. <laughs> all right, next time. Next time, we're going backwards in time a little bit, back to the golden year of 1986. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, now, if you want to read the article, go ahead and over to lunduke.com. If you want to, if you want to help support this show, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The show, the articles at the Lunduke Journal, the podcast at the Lunduke Journal, any of that stuff. Go to lunduke.com. There's a little link on the left-hand side. It says support the Lunduke Journal. You can use that to, to pitch in via PayPal. You can toss a couple of bucks over as a little, little tip jar sort of a deal. You can subscribe to us over at Patreon. Again, there's links on lunduke.com. And you can patronage our, our amazing sponsors like Linode. If you go to linode.com, slash Lunduke, or just click on the Linode links at the bottom of some of the various articles. Uh, you get a $20 credit to set up your hosting, which is fantastic. Set up a nice little Linux server. Linux in the cloud, baby, for 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks you can apply towards that. That's fantastic. Plus, uh, Linode's regular prices are great. Linode has data centers all over the world. They have like a dozen plus data centers. It's absolutely fantastical. Uh, and, and they help support shows like this. So what's not to love there? Uh, and of course, you can order t-shirts. Uh, I would stay away from ordering t-shirts for a little bit just because the t-shirt printer that I'm using, uh, they are kind of going slow right now because of everything that's happening. So wait, if you want t-shirts, you know, you can buy them right now, but I don't know how quickly they're shipping. They might take a couple of weeks to actually get printed or something. I don't know. I might wait. I might wait a couple of weeks until things start opening back up a little, a little bit more or maybe a few months, or maybe a few years, whatever it is. I'd wait for that and then order some shirts. But there are other ways to support the show and the, and the Lunduke Journal and the articles and everything else in the meantime. Uh, all right, everybody. That's it for now. 
Uh, next time, we'll see if whatever operating system I'm going to be talking about from 1986 <laughs> uh, can take the crown from MS-DOS 6.22. I have my doubts. <laughs> see you later.